Hello everyone, it's Leo and it's time to talk about episode 38 from Wonderful Precure. What a sweet episode this was. Oh my god, I loved it to bits. And I'm so happy for so many things. One of them is that at the start of the show, I believed that Komugi's origins were magical. As in, she had that heart on the back of her head, she was chosen to become a precure. I really believed that there was something magical in her past. And I'm very glad that it doesn't. It's a simple one, it's a, it's a mundane one, and I really like it. And the second one is that uh, for the majority of Wonderful Precure, I felt that Iroha was kind of an uninteresting character. I was not really vibing with her. While I did not dislike her character, I thought that there was nothing really interesting about her. And I am very glad that Wonderful is taking this uh, second half route and giving her a lot more character, a lot more flair. And I have been really liking what they've been doing with her character so far. I feel like Wonderful has a very strong cast. And until like five episodes ago, I would say that the weak link for Wonderful for me would be Iroha. But then the narrative of Wonderful is proving that Iroha is super interesting, just like the other cast members of Wonderful. And this episode, to me, was the best one in showing that, even better than the, the ones that came prior with her relationship with Satoru. Obviously, it was very sweet, but her relationship with Komugi is the strongest. It, this is the strongest bond in this show. I mean, her relationship with Komugi, the wonderful duo, and Yuki's and Mayu's relationship, the Nyanderful duo as well. Both bonds are super solid, super strong, and they are the highlight of wonderful to me. So let's talk about this episode. We start the episode with Komugi playing, and, you know, they're just vibing there. They're just having a chill moment, and... Right at the start, Komugi wants Iroha to pet her. And Iroha knows exactly where to pet Komugi that she likes so much. That is important for two reasons. One of them is because uh, that scene is to show their bond and their intimacy. They know a lot about each other. And the second one is that it's going to play an important role later down in the episode with Komugi's previous owner. Uh, and so while they were playing... A woman comes in and she finds, she sees Komugi and she instantly remembers a dog that disappeared two years ago. And uh, this woman is actually uh, uh, someone who rescues animals or takes care of animals from people who can't take care of them anymore because they're sick, because they're hospitalized, because something has happened to them that... Uh, isn't they're, they're not able to take care of that animal anymore. I like this aspect that is brought into Wonderful, even though it was super fast, super short. I feel like the episode could have uh, exploited that a little more because that is a reality of lots of animals. And since the bond between humans and animals is so important in this show, this is a bond that should have been focused a little more and, you know, they should have brought a little bit more light onto this. And then we learned that Komugi is actually Maron, or was actually Maron, who was a dog who had an owner, who had to be hospitalized, and when she was locked up, she found a way to escape, and uh, they never found Komugi again. Komugi, as we know, suffered, probably suffered a lot on the streets, and then she found Iroha two years ago, and they became wonderful friends. And um, it's interesting to see uh, the, the, that scene. While we see Iroha and her family talking to Yuki, we see uh, the other members of Wonderful talking to Komugi. And Komugi remembers nothing before uh, Iroha. It, it's just like her life resetted after she met Iroha for the first time and her life began anew after that. So all her memories, everything she knows, everything she feels is has started after she met Iroha, after they started sharing their life together. 
And then Iroha arrives. Oh, and before that, before Iroha comes back to talk to them, we see Satoru talking to them and how he's worried because maybe the previous family from Komugi will want Komugi back. And Komugi is quick to say, I want to be with Iroha forever. And then when Iroha arrives, Komugi is super excited to see her again. There's obviously that little tenseness in the air. And Komugi is like, oh, I want to play with you. I was waiting for you. And Iroha's like, she's already feeling a little bad because she knows that in the next day she will take Komugi to see her previous owner, to see her previous family. And uh, Komugi is super worried and she's like, oh my God, uh, are, are, like, am I going to be with my previous family and we're not going to be together anymore? I mean, she does not ask this directly, but we know that this is in her mind. And Iroha's like, Everything will be fine. She does not answer straight forward and she, she just glosses over it. And uh, we see that when they go to sleep, none of them can sleep. They're all thinking. I mean, Iroha and Komugi, both of them, they're not able to sleep. It is weighing heavily on both of them. This is a big moment and kind of a sad moment too. And it's interesting because we've seen that... Um, episode two or three, I don't remember, right very early on in Wonderful, that uh, Iroha tells her mom that uh, if, I mean, she promises her mom, her mom is the one who raises that question, because that can happen. She asks, uh, she tells Iroha that since Komugi is a stray dog, if they find her family, because that is a possibility, they would have to return Komugi to her family. And Iroha promises that they would do that if that's the case. And so there is a promise lingering in the air. And it's funny because the narrative of the episode makes you believe that Iroha is considering this promise. And she is thinking about the possibility of the family, of the original family from Komugi wanting her back. And the narrative makes you believe that Iroha is like battling inside of her but for her we see that after the answer is very clear she wants to break the promise and i really loved how the narrative worked with that because it made us believe one thing but in reality it was another one and uh when they arrive in the hospital because komugi's previous owner is still hospitalized so he probably has a very serious health condition and we see an older man, he's in a wheelchair, and then they start talking. Um, when he sees Komugi, he calls her Maron, and, well, she was his previous uh, dog. Komugi does not remember him, but then he asks Iroha to let her stay on his lap for a little while. Iroha lets her, and then he starts petting Komugi. At that moment, Komugi starts having those feelings again and she starts remembering how it was for her when uh, her how her previous life before Iroha was and we have some very nice dialogue which in which we see the older man talking about the fact that Komugi ate very little and she was also very shy and Iroha thinks that this is a very surprising thing because Komugi eats a lot and she's not shy at all. She wants to discover the whole world. That man quickly says that it's because she and Maron, or she and Komugi now, she and Maron became the best friends and she took care of Komugi in the best way possible. So it's clear that that man already sees their relationship as something strong, as something powerful, and he sees how much she took care of Komugi. He massages Komugi in a very specific place that Iroha did not know that Komugi liked, and Komugi was enjoying that. But then Iroha starts talking about the promise that she made to her mom. That is the first time Komugi hears this promise, and I loved that scene because it really broke my expectation, and it gave a lot of character to Komugi to Iroha, a lot of character to Iroha. Uh, we see in the whole episode and in the whole wonderful Precure series, we see Iroha 
not we don't see Iroha, we see Komugi saying how much she wants to be with Iroha forever. All the time. She wants to stay with Iroha every single second of the day. And even though we know Iroha loves Komugi more than anything, we don't see that in the same way. They express their feelings in different ways. We know that uh, Iroha cares for her, but she does not say it every single time like Komugi does. In this episode, she says it. And it was a very beautiful scene when she started crying and sharing that she wants to be with Komugi forever. And even though she made that promise, she asks him to stay with Komugi. Before he is able to give her an answer, we have a Garu Garu attack, a Gao Gao on attack, Garu Garu, a Gao Gao on attack. They transform and there is a, an action scene in which Cure Wonderful is able to use the Kiririn Rabbit or Kiririn Usagi power up and she is able to resolve the situation very easily. The Gao Gao on is purified. Everything is fine. And then at the end, we see that... Um, Komugi, now as a human, goes to that old man. She sits on his lap again and she starts talking. This is now her turn and she expresses everything she feels and everything she's been through after she met Iroha. She tells him a lot about what Iroha taught her and how wonderful life is for Komugi now. And she even explains what wonderful means. And one of the things she told him is that she remembers, she remembered the good feeling that she had after, uh, after he petted her. She remembered the safe environment he gave her when he was still her owner, when she was still Maron. But for her, the most precious and the strongest thing is Iroha's, uh, Iroha's relationship with her. And so she wants to stay with Iroha as well. But obviously, Komugi is a human. She's not the dog as she was before. And uh, that man cannot know that she can turn into a human. And if she turns into a dog, she can't talk to him. And there's a little bit of confusion. But then the man at that moment comes closer gets Iroha's hand, gets Komugi's hand, and he puts them together and says and tells them that their bond is wonderful and their bond is forever. He now has the chance to answer Iroha's request and he doesn't need to say much. He just needs to tell them that, well, they are wonderful together. They are perfect for each other. And they don't need anything else. So he would never ask for Komugi to stay with him or for Maron to stay with him. And I love that at the end of the dialogue, he calls Maron Komugi. He was calling her Maron for the whole episode. But now he understands that after everything she's been through with Komugi, with Iroha, she is now Komugi. She's not Maron anymore. That life is in the past. And now she is the wonderful Komugi. And, you know, those scenes of both of them holding their hands with the sun on top of their hand. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. This was an amazing episode. And I want to talk about some of the things that I did not talk about when I was talking about the episode as a whole. I would not think I would say this, but seeing Torame in this episode made me remember the episodes in Wonderful that did not have a general. And honestly, that played a very good part in Wonderful Precure. Because Wonderful, I feel like, at least to me, the most interesting aspect of Wonderful is in the characters and their humanity. Their cure part of Wonderful, it's not that interesting, honestly. And every time Torame appeared in this episode, I was praying for the, for the scene to end. 
because I wanted to see more of Kumugi, Iroha, and the old man. I wanted to see more of this amazingness that we were having. And Torame was there breaking the rhythm and bringing so many unnecessary things. Like, it was, it was just very unnecessary, in my opinion. It did not bring anything. I mean, it kind of broke the rhythm, which might be good for the target audience because, you know, the scenes were supposed to be funny, but it didn't work for me. Honestly, I, I really like Zakuro, and I think Gaon is going to be an amazing final boss or villain, but Torame really, really lacks. I was enjoying him at the start, but right now I feel like he adds nothing to the show. There were two scenes that I forgot to mention while I was recording, so I will record audio only. The first one is that scene between Yuki and Komugi. It is very nice to see how Yuki values Komugi's relationship with Iroha. She can really see the strong bond they have, and she was able to tell that to Komugi, and that is not something that Yuki usually does. It just goes to show how strong the bond between Yuki and Komugi is as well, and how much she also values Komugi's feelings, and she wants to make Komugi feel good and confident in her bond with Iroha. That was really good. And another very small scene, but very, very sweet as well, was when Iroha was very tense before coming into the hospital and Satoru just looked at her and tell, told her, take a deep breath. And she did. And she felt better. He was there to calm her down, to make her feel herself again. That was very good, especially after they've been through in the last few episodes. It was very sweet. And the other thing I want to say is that we have two gorgeous Miko things. The first one is a new eye catch, which was animated by Itaoka, who's one of the strongest and most iconic Precure animators. He does the Nyami transformation in this season, and he did the new eye catch. Niko Sama is the queen girl. I love her. She's such a diva. And then at the end of the episode, while she, while uh, Komugi and Iroha were talking and holding hands, she was there in the back watching everything. But she was not as a unicorn. She was there as a human. Niko Sama, what is going on? She's so pretty, but that's not that's not the thing. What is Nico hiding? To me, she's hiding something. Why didn't she appear as a human for the wonderful cast already? What is she hiding? When did she get the power to become a human again? Or was she always able to be one and she did, just didn't show them? What is going on, Nico-sama? I feel like she's hiding so many secrets and I'm so excited to learn more about her. Super excited. And next week, we're going to have a Halloween episode, but things seem to be way more serious than we thought. We're going to have the Nico evolution, the Nico transformation as a human. We're going to see that in front of our eyes. But Gaon will take a stand, and it seems that even Komugi will be turned into a Gao Gaon, or at least he will try, or someone will try to turn Komugi into a Gao Gaon, what is going on here? Girl, I'm shocked. Anyways, babies, this is it for now. This is my opinion on episode 38, which was really, really gorgeous. And I want to hear your thoughts. Please leave in the comments. Let's keep talking about it. Anyways, this is it for now. I'm going to take this little time to thank the members of the Magical Cinema channel. If you're a member, thank you very much for your support here on YouTube, on Patreon, on Throne. Thank you. And if you've watched up until now, thank you so much as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, bye-bye.